Hello and welcome to Dimsy's Domain and we found out from Dragon Ball Super episode 63 that Whis as well as Vados, the angels, angels and where are the wings? Goku asked the same question and not only is he an angel but he materializes and ceases to function dependent on whether there's an active god, the one he's assigned to which in Whis's case is Beerus, in Vados' case is Shampa. Speaking about Shampa today joining me is none other than the destruction god of YouTube in terms of the Dragon Ball community, Geekdom 101. I don't want to destroy, I don't want to destroy the community, what are you talking but, about? But you like Shampa so wouldn't you want that analogy kind of thing? Come on, I'm, I'm I, calling I just, Wanna, I just I just want to eat like Champa does. I want to eat that purple fried chicken he had that one time. Yeah. I thought that that looked good. Or that rank egg which ugh, nasty one is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but but the damn cup ramen was great though, right? Exactly. So uh, so yeah. guys, I'm joined with Geekdom 101 here and as I've explained, we finally found out what Whis is for. The longest amount of time we known that Whis just says I'm the life form known as Whis, but now that we found out he's an angel it's quite interesting like what do you think about them introducing filling in this gap of the god hierarchy as you said i know that you don't want to do a video just yet talking about the god hierarchy because more and more things are just being introduced people have been dying for me to do one and i want i actually was planning one and yeah it just keeps once the omni king appeared i was like okay you know what <laughs> not happening exactly. i can't but uh the thing is that the term angel, I think, was just used just... I don't think we can use it to compare it with, like, a biblical angel. I think it's just a term that was used, like a title, so to speak, like the word God. Because, you know, in yeah. Dragon Ball, gods aren't omnipotent or omnificent or whatever that word is. I can, I can never say that word right. You know, they, they're almost like just higher levels of beings, but they, they can be killed and, you know, things like that. Uh, so, you know, it's one of those things where I think they're just using the word angel in, in that kind of context. But what I found interesting is that they implied and correct me if i'm wrong i have to watch it again in hd because i don't really remember exactly word for word for word what was said but don't they imply that when a god destruction is killed the angel assistant whether it be wis or vados end up in some kind of uh like stasis exactly, like some kind yeah. of uh s suspended animation until the uh they get a new god of destruction or something yeah, like that. you're right just that they're introducing as you said the omnipotency of um, a god which we're uh, usually in real life we're accustomed to is not the same in dragon ball so they've introduced a further dependency amongst these beings we know that the hakaioshin the god of destruction and the kaioshin are directly dependent on each other and now we know there's some sort of triangular dependency amongst all three if you kill a kaioshin the god of destruction dies and thus causing the corresponding angel to dematerialize uh, maybe let's say lose its function yeah it's weird isn't it i'm, I'm actually waiting for us for them to give us more information on this <sighs> to be honest i doubt they're gonna they're gonna expand on this but from what we've seen with Whis and vados we can assume that angels are primarily assigned to gods of destruction once again this is still very speculative this, and this is the realm of speculation we're gonna dwell into and i mean we know at least in universe six and seven that is the case yeah and it's implied we just haven't seen them yet and it's hard to really say until we see it but yeah continue you were gonna and say just the angels Angels uh, represent the whole calm and calculated nature. It's, it's quite ironic. They're the calm to the God of Destruction's rage. And I just, I really do like the religious overtones from your video, from your Dragon Ball in-depth video, talking about and dissecting the themes of the Buwak. We know that Toriyama really does like to dwell into religious overtones as well. And angels are... And he digs into a lot of them. I just want to say, like, he'll he'll take from Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity. He'll, he'll take from everything he can for his story. Yep. And it's really funny because they kind of, they've been hinting at from day one i'll talk about the appearance in a second but you know how angels are beings of complete obedience usually and that's why they're probably not phased at all or shocked when zeno first arrived on the scene and by his appearance unlike beerus and shampa who were absolutely terrified and let's talk about the appearance of Whis and Vados. So they have a modified halo around their neck, which is kind of a quirky twist since we've... Yeah, good catch. So, yeah, because we've already established the halos from people who are already dead or passed on in the other world. So to compensate, they've done a, a bigger, fatter halo around the neck as well. Another thing I've taken from this is that because it's around the neck and that halo feature on Whis and Vados, maybe it represents a big chunky feature which is similar to a collar could this be a possible personification for the chain link to the god of destruction or something along the lines it's, it is really really interesting though what do, what do you think do you think there's this chain link to the gods of destruction or and there's a way to sever the link because if you think of it like this th they have all the motivation to heck become evil the god of destruction the kaioshins 
and now the angels have a they have a reason if they want to go to the dark side their reason is hey listen i don't want to be dependent on anyone let me sever this link so is there a possibility of seeing a evil angel or could that be a villain later on, later on in the future who knows i would love to see that i mean we've seen see it's interesting because you know we'll talk about a little bit here with you you know in the toriyama kind of the way he designed his universe there's hell and then there's the demon realm and they're not the same thing big misconception they're very confusing hell and the demon realm are two different realms hell exists underneath all right hell exists in a plane opposite of the earth and the demon realm exists in a different plane so it's like and we've never really seen the demon realm the only way you can really see the demon realm is in that one episode where gohan fought dabura where bobby d made it look like the demon realm and then of course in dragon ball heroes we actually see our characters go into the demon realm in the dark demon realm saga but the problem is most dragon ball fans never saw that because it's in japan only sucks but that's how it is yeah another thing that i wanted to bring up with with regards to what you're talking about, is the whole idea of the Makayo Shin. Again, Toriyama mentioned the Makayo Shin in an interview way back, I believe in 2012, that there are evil Makais, like evil Kaioshin. Of course, like I said before, Dragon Ball Heroes and Xenoverse have expounded upon this a little bit, but we still have not seen genuine Makayo Shin. So if there are evil Kais, one would imply that, or one could Im imply that there might be evil angels as well. We know that there aren't any evil gods of destruction, that we're aware of but who really knows because technically we've only met Shampa and, and Beerus we don't even know where the universe 10 god destruction is and people have been asking about that they ask me all the time and it's like dude i don't i don't know i don't i i, I know my dragon ball but i don't know I, I don't write for the show so you know it's one of those things where uh it's possible i think there's a lot of ideas that toriyama has kind of played with that he never really executed and i think either we're gonna see it or we may never see it or we might see it in just the video games and there's an advantage now that toriyama's only writing the guidelines to our knowledge and that toyotara has taken the helm of writing the manga and toriyama are spearheading the anime front hopefully uh, with these different minds amongst uh, Toriyama's guidelines they expand on these certain themes these certain these concepts and this is where we might get an expansion in absolutely everything for example in Super we've seen we've seen the Mafuba we've seen um, the Kaioken making some sort of a return and you you wonder did this come from Toriyama or did this come from some person in the editing office of Toei and here's a question because I know you like to answer questions which are unanswerable as well as for you guys yo I love doing that <laughs> as, as well as for everyone else <laughs> <laughs> everyone else in the comment section we know from theology that there are different classes and ranks amongst the angels so where could we and vados rank is the grand priest the daishinkan a seraph an archangel what could he be his halo feature is not in the same position as we or vados so it's higher up to his head so could of course he's more powerful so could he be a higher rank are we going to be introduced to different levels different ranks of angels in super and thus further expanding upon this whole uh, this god hierarchy because remember we said that oh daishinkan is amongst the top five fighters in battle strength amongst all universes so there are right so you think there might be more grand priests maybe this is getting out of hand dimsy this is getting out of hand i think there's one grand priest because like the grand supreme kai he watches over everything but there might be a level between the grand priest and we so just a priest a usual bog standard priest and then there might be Whis as well. So, okay, how about this? Top five battle powers amongst all universes. Now, if we don't include Zeno, we have the Grand Priest, and then we have we might have the South, East, North, and West Priests. Mm, you never know that. You never know. Um, or it might be other people who we don't haven't met yet. It's just there's so much lore building, and I hope. I mean, we don't haven't even touched on Planet Sadal yet. A lot of people want to see that too. It's just nonstop with this with this uh, franchise, and I'm excited. I, I'm overwhelmed, bro. I really am. But but that being said, yeah, I mean it's hard to say. And then of course we have an Omni King. Is there some kind of like other Omni King that might be maybe not as strong, but like somebody who's like an evil version? We don't know yet. There's just so much potential for stories here, bro. And that's the scariest thing because you you wonder and you hope that they execute everything. And just to touch up on uh, what you talked about, a potential evil counterpart to Zeno. So. It's a little out there, but we've seen spirits, vampires, warlocks, witches, angels, demons, creation and destruction gods in Dragon Ball. Have I missed any out? I don't think so. But have we seen a devil? And no, Spike the Devil Man does not count. In theology... Neither does Dabura. Nor Dabura, yeah, because they're demons, essentially. In theology, demons are a category of beings which are fallen angels as you've mentioned earlier and um, maybe we don't know about makashi if that's gonna have an introduction or a presence in dragon Ball super but the set of angels who rebel against god they're regarded as demons whereas 
devil is usually fought as one. Demons are the soldiers of the devil. So yes, devil is the antithesis of good and everything righteous. As Toriyama uses a lot of religious iconography and ideas throughout his piece, of course, as you expanded upon in your Dragon Ball in depth talking about the themes of the Boo arc, what are the possibilities of us seeing a devil, a being which is the personification of evil, although we kind of got that with Majin Buu, but the polar opposite of Zeno, I don't know, this is a question for everyone, once again unanswerable, and I know you love to talk about this, but we kind of answered this, but that would make an ideal final boss for Dragon Ball Super, don't you think? Well, mm. well, it could be, a, it would have to be somebody so powerful that even the Omni King could be in danger, yeah, it's very possible, so that's kind of one of the things that, that, that could be the case, you know, but uh, I don't know, I mean, I remember some fans were joking that Broly was going to tap into a Super Saiyan devil form. That would be cool if they did have that. Like, maybe not for Broly, but for a different character. But, it, I don't know. I mean, it's getting to the point now where the introduction of the Omni King kind of killed all the drama because... Not only is he there, but he's also friends with Goku. Yeah. And the fact that he's friends with Goku is like, all right, like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and like, Goku has the not... button as well. And he's got the button, yeah. So it's just one of those things where what can you really do? You know what I mean? What can you really do? Yeah. And to top this video off, I'm just going to quickly advertise a few of the videos for you guys to get that dose of education. So, of course, check out Dragon Ball in depth. Check out all the themes of the Saiyan arc, of the uh, Saiyan arc. <gasps> Of all the arcs. It's the same thing. Yeah, of, of the Cell arc, of the Majin Buu arc. Check out everything. Check out the Uzaru Explain. I'm going to leave a link to the playlist for Dragon Ball In Depth. Make sure to subscribe to Geek The 101. I don't need to remind you. You'll probably subscribe to him anyway. And like an angel, we shall flow off into... And we'll dematerialize because someone's died or whatever. Anyway, guys, like, share, comment, subscribe. You may now exit Dimsy's domain. Thank you and goodbye. Bye.